Okay, so here I am in the second floor. There are some of these uh, Chinese arts and uh, collections. And uh, it's uh, just a very, very interesting. Not only interesting, it uh, makes me to think about uh, uh, Chinese history, Chinese language, and the tradition. So, <clears throat> in China, the language, especially now, I am very interested in languages. In China, you can see each place is different, and the art style is very different. If I am right, this is north of China. So this kind of uh, material is from north of China. They are relatively um, a very bold and uh, more, uh, a more uh, bulky. Bulky is not the word. It's just very brave, very manly. Excuse me if you want to put some... Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, <laughs> content uh, uh, explanation, but it's very uh, masculine. It's uh, it's more or less very brave, very audacious, and very expressive, and extravagant, or very um, exaggerating, and not very refined. There are some works that this does put a lot of work into the refinement, but in general, it's a very, uh, very uh, guy or, or, or this expressive way of, uh, of, uh, of art form. It's not a very small, cute, delicate, it's different. Even the cuteness is different from, uh, from the south of China. So each place is different, has its uh, own uh, unique character. Another thing about, we will go back to this difference a bit later. First, we just appreciate the art. When you finish this piece of, uh, of uh, gold, gold, this piece of bowl or vase or container, finish it in the perfect, smooth, simple simplicity, simple form is beauty. And another layer of added beauty, and the value is not only about the shape, it's about the added work. For example, this particular piece, when they finish this round ways, and then they use a metal or a stick or some hard stuff to encarve this uh, uh, circle, that is work. And then to, to uh, scratch out this uh, relief, relief um, the, the, the very uh, scratch out this design, it's another uh, level of art because the smoothness, the arrangement of, uh, of this flower and whether it's a finally balanced. See, here is a flower, the same size, this is the same size and a little bit variation. There is a symmetry, there is asymmetry, how you blind them together and finally you get a piece of artwork that is just to feel comfortable and feel right. The right amount of roughness, the right amount of refineness, that defines a piece of good artwork. And then at the end to put it back into kiln to, to re, reheat it. Okay, for example, this one you can see even better. This one, first you make a one piece of uh, tai, the, the baby form, not really a baby, but the 
original initial bisque form of this bowl, a perfect bowl with good shape, with the, you see the edge a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, yeah, like a lotus leaf. This one is done. And then before the, before the bisque is getting totally dried out, use a tool, whether it's a, a knife or a stick, at that time it's already there is already metal tools so i'm thinking this is a, a, a steel or or iron uh, tool to incuff this uh, to incuff this uh, uh, design so this is a very original it's very uh, it's north of china and they like it to be finished like this and then in cup a little bit put a very light layer layer of glaze and this one is more work onto it first you can see the very delicate design and it's not just a one like this one is one branch and this one is many designs combined together and the in carving is much deeper so that you can put in the glaze and the glaze is very uh, it's it represents a particular place because of the natural resource from that place or the the the, the uh, preference from that place this one is from south of China, and this is a particular color of that Longquan. It is greenish, bluish, and a transparent glaze. And uh, put a layer of glaze, relatively thicker, so the surface feels smooth. So when you wash it, it's much easier to clean. And you can, you can see the delicate design behind it because of the 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 knife's uh, depth difference so Longquan, you can see comparing with this one this is from north of china hebei where i my family was from so you can see from my character is very bold <laughs> not refined and this is from south of China, which is much refined, and the shape is uh, is softer and smoother. It's just the difference. This must be from north. Uh -huh. Oh, this one is from south, Longquan also. Oh, this is Jing De Zhen. Mm-hmm. Yao. This one is from Nan Yi Mo Xin. It's from um, Hebei, where I, my family was originated. And uh, I think when I was young, I have seen this kind of uh, uh, ceramic uh, uh, pillow. This is a pillow. <laughs> I remember when I was young, my family, I think my family had one. I went to countryside, not uh, uh, in my home in Beijing, but my parents' family in the countryside. And I felt it so pain to sleep on this ceramic pillow. Mm. Oh, look at this. And now you see this work is so much more work. It makes this... Um, uh, ceramic uh, uh, bisque. It's like a cake, not totally. Uh, it's like uh, we make the dough and uh, make into this shape and then in calf, low kong, in calf and make it empty. Wow, look at this work. So I was thinking in China there are so many different dialects. And a lot of dialects 
do not even communicate. For example, I can, I can, uh, I speak Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, but I cannot communicate with people very south of China, uh, Cantonese or Hubei, Henan. Some other people speak the same Mandarin Chinese, but with very strong accent. It's quite interesting to see the China's unique uh, language pattern. And uh, in America, it's usually not uh, so much. You are from New York, and you are from uh, California. You speak the same language, maybe because the country is built on the same base from the, from the same originality. There are differences, but not as much as uh, what we see in China. That's so interesting. And uh, in, in some other part, in France, there is a south of uh, France, and Quebec, <laughs> not France. Uh, it's uh, the the francophone has difference, but not that much different from uh, from uh, uh, the Chinese dialect. It's so unique. I think the civilization really brings uh, um, the, the 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 uniformity of language of. Uh, written words unite a country. China's words were united 2,000 years ago, Qin Shi Huang, but still <laughs> there is a lot of uh, diversity in, in the dialect. Wow, I have never seen this kind. Interesting. Look at that. That is a very particular example of uh, of that in carving style of uh, of uh, ceramic of style. <laughs> and this one, the beauty of this one is it's a perfect shape, very smooth, very uh, tender, very warm and very um, just a humble shape you hold it you do not feel inferior you, you do not feel intimidated and uh, it's a, an absolutely good quality hard working but uh, the craftsmen make it so beautiful that you cannot even feel that is beautiful, that is pretended. And a lot of work put into making it a humble piece. I love it. And uh, the shape and everything make it, uh, make it just uh, so humble and so beautiful. It looks like a lotus lotus bud not totally opened up so the bottom is a little bit small and the top is big so it's good for containing things it's very useful usable you can put a lot of stuff in and the bottom is a relatively thin so maybe this is not an everyday bowl for the for for people to eat food might be some more delicate for some uh, decoration use or for some uh, specialized uh, dishes. So this one, see the bottom is very large. It's a, a daily use stuff looks like. And this one is very stable, right? And this style, no, the Japanese has a lot of this kind of style bowl. Uh, the bottom is relatively small. I personally do not like it because it's not stable, but it's a, a judgment of a particular style. I like uh, 
things like this, not too small, not too big, and stable enough. This one, <laughs> functionality of the stuff. So in the silk robe, there is a lot of, uh, there were a lot of uh, this kind of blue and white. And uh, China's blue was not uh, the, the best quality. If you learn about it, you know about it. And um, you, you, you understand blue, China local blue or China the blue from uh, from uh, a China mainland or China uh, area was not very bright. There was um, uh, a particular uh, blue from Persian. It's called Suma Liu Qin, small ta or something, small ta. I, I have not yet found the English word for it. And, uh, and I searched the online dictionary, I searched the Wikipedia, I searched the translation. I have not yet found that particular word. It's quite a unique word. It's uh, just a, a pure, beautiful Persian blue. I think in art there is a word called Persian blue. It's very bright. It's uh, like uh, cyan. It's like cyan, it's like uh, royal blue, and just a beautiful blue. And you can see this piece of artwork, great structure, great shape, but uh, the material, they're missing something. This is not an imperial material. Why do I say so? The shape is not perfectly uh, symmetry. Something, if you make for the imperial family, for the emperor, it has to be perfect. There is no creativity. They practice, they make it right, and also you can see the painting style is, uh, is a little bit rough, is a little bit expressive, it's not the most refined. So it's not uh, the emperor's imperial. It's uh, it's definitely a good piece of artwork. It's a, a prized commodity, if I say. You can see this could be in in the in the market for for people for rich people for the well-off family as a decoration but it's not from a, a, a imperial family. This one is uh, so perfect. It looks very much like a, a great art piece. They are all great art piece. Let's see. And this one is very much, much more delicate. It looks like a, a piece for the emperor as a, a contribution to the emperor or to the official uh, minister or to the to the officials, the city officials, the county officials. It's like a contribution, and those are really you can see the difference of this kind of artwork and that artwork. This is done with. Uh, with fear, with, uh, with, uh, it's like you tip tap toe. You you are so careful to make this piece each stroke painted and done, and this one is very much more free, right? You can see the freedom in it. Sometimes you see the the. Um, the blue becomes very dark. It's because of uh, the gu, the mineral, get so hot it got a little bit burnt. 
that's the color, the oxidation under extreme high temperature. So that is also a, a way to judge the temperature of the kiln. Look at this, they are so delicate. This is a this is a very, very delicate piece of artwork. And this one is uh, is more free and more uh, uh, local artisan, but not uh, so uh, so much uh, imperial. This one is uh, is leave the white space and then paint. It's very hard to do actually. Same as this one. They paint the, they outline the flower and then put dark blue in the background. It's very much, it's a, a yin to yang to positive or negative. This is a negative painting and this is a negative painting. Those negative paintings are much more harder. So this one as an art piece because of its work, its extra work to make it a negative painting, this will sell more than those positive paintings. Do I make any sense? Every piece of work, every, every small effort of your, your labor becomes a part of your price tag. And this is also <laughs> a little bit of my uh, mentality and uh, my way of doing things. I can make my uh, bookmark or make my uh, painting and things much easier. But something about it, it's uh, in my blood that the more work you put, the more thought you put, the the value of this art piece is higher, the higher the art piece. So I make it complicated is because it's my way to show respect. Do I make any sense? Oh gosh, look at this one. Wow. Look at this. Wow. Okay, so here in the Asian Art Museum, there is an exhibition of Zhang Daqian's painting. Zhang Daqian is uh, one of the most famous, influential, and prolific Chinese artists uh, in the recent years. And this year is his 120 years anniversary. He passed away uh, uh, in 1983 and this one is uh, his exhibition. This is uh, his wife and uh, he has been traveling uh, in many different places in the world. He was uh, really very influential and he combined uh, East, West. It's one of uh, the art piece that East meets West. He left China, I think in his 30s, and went to India, went to um, Argentina and uh, California. And at the very end of his uh, later years, he went back to Taiwan to live in Taiwan. And uh, so this, uh, is one of his particular style. It's a poor more painting. Poor is to throw, to pour. So kind of like uh, 
Jackson Pollock. I do not know whether he pour a complete the complete bowl of ink or use a big brush that I do not know but it's very expressive a lot of his artwork got uh, inspiration from uh, his years in California he lived in Monterey uh, Peninsula it's uh, the Monterey Aquarium and a lot of this artwork comes from the observation of the zigzag pine trees as you can see these pine trees and he's one of uh, the the artist that uh, developed discovered or just to particularly use a lot of this blue and green teal green or greenish bluish so he has done a lot of using this particular color if you see a lot of his work use this color here and there some are lighter some are stronger so you see this one has this uh, it's more refined small piece and these are so poetic when you see it. It's, it's, uh, it's simple and easy, and each of them is a poetry. Look at the color. It's uh, not exaggerated and very harmonious. very dreamy-like, typical Chinese style, and a lot of white space to allow you to, to develop your imagination, to allow you to fill in the white space. So those very ex expressive, very exaggerated, ink slow and the delicate small piece love this work it's so expressive and there is a particular beauty in his work that harmony that uh, that uh, mystery that uh, fun see this is just a little fruits and uh, he you can see he was uh, having some fun <laughs> oh, oh i'm going the other way around sorry oh look at the bamboo so simple yet so elegant. Wow. And this is his uh, self portrait. He was very, very good at, uh, at uh, figure drawing. This is his picture. His art study. This is in Monterey. People are always in his uh, artwork. I love this blue and the green. I love this. So. Just the ink flow and a little bit of this red. It's a uh, wow, it's quite amazing. And look at this one. Oh my, it's 
there is control, there is freedom. When you have done so much of this painting, you know ink where will go. And you also know not to control the ink where it wants to go. It's just the magic. The more you do painting, the more you will find inspiration and you will find something that touches you. This lotus, wow. He's quite a <laughs> crazy old guy. <laughs> the color. It's, he is totally in his own zone. And not, uh, not uh, bothering about what other people think or will think. This may not be. Yeah, this is not uh, his painting. This is somebody else artwork. This is Zhang Daqian. You can see, you know, um, when artists does, there is something so unique about Chinese painting is that strength. And each stroke, it looks simple. It's so strong. It's that elegance, that strength, it's what we pursue. And, uh, there, there, there are watercolor painting. Some artists do it very flow, very soft. But there is something in Chinese painting that is not soft. See this painting? Oh my goodness! I, I cannot, uh, I cannot explain it. You feel it. You feel it. That is, uh, that is thousands of. Of, of, of pounds of power inside him and comes out so whew, cha, one stroke that one stroke is 50 years of practice oh. so amazing I like to see this kind of very um, oh, Zhao Ang. Wow, this is another artist, very, very famous artist. I think uh, he was Zhao uh, Shaoang, 1967, same as uh, Zhang Dajin's period. Wonderful work. This is a Chinese um, studio, how pretty it is.